Hey friends, welcome back. So in the previous few lessons, I've given you some exercises, some practices, some tools to let go of whatever misperceptions you might still have, misperceptions regarding the nature of who you truly are and that fact that it's always already present to you. In fact, that you are it already, always. So this is crucial. It's crucial to gain conviction in what's always already here. It's the shortcut to enlightenment. It's what I'm all about when it comes to these awareness teachings is to cut to the chase, to realize that yes, it's always already here. Now let's experience that. Let's experience that. Let's experience that until it becomes naturally self-evident and obvious. And it's as true to you as gravity or as breathing. It's as natural to you as breathing. So if you follow these practices, if you perform these exercises, which I hope you do, because it's important, it really does help you. You have come to a great sense of conviction in awareness right now. At this point, you feel very comfortable with the fact that you actually are by nature enlightenment itself. You are awakeness, awareness, presence, awareness itself. Congratulations. To some extent, you have fully realized this. Now, this final lesson in this chapter, I just want to address something that I see trips up a lot of people in their seeking for awareness. And that is the idea that awareness is some kind of state, which is another way of saying that pure awareness has a form of its own, has a state of its own, has a feeling of its own, an experience of its own. This is not true. Now, I'm not saying that awareness cannot release the sense of ease, the sense of presence, the sense of awakeness, the sense of clarity, all these beautiful qualities. Yes, those are inherent in awareness. However, awareness is not dependent on these qualities being experienced by your body mind vehicle or by your lower self's perception of that experience, if we can put it that way. So awareness itself should not be sought out as being some kind of state because we all know the experience of being told about enlightenment and awareness and self-realization and then starting to look for it starting to find the truth starting to find the peace within but then we think we have it for a moment but then we lose it again and when we have it we f are afraid of losing it and we try to maintain it and hold on to it this all comes down to one basic miss perception, which is that awareness has a state of its own, which it does not. You see, awareness is essentially formless. And I'll get into this more in a later lesson, more specifically. But for now, just understand that awareness is not a state. And a state is simply an appearance appearing inside of awareness. So even though you've gained a high level of conviction in awareness being always already here right now, there might still be this aspect of you, this portion of you that is seeking for a particular type of experience. It seeks for awareness to be a particular type of feeling, perhaps, or a particular type of clarity. This can continue, perpetuate, and increase the sense of strive and seeking and contraction, which actually, in a sense, not truly, not fundamentally, but experientially, blocks us from realizing more of the already present nature of awakeness itself. So what we want is for you to be completely relaxed, to be completely at ease, to feel completely comfortable and confident in what's always already here. If you're, if you're equating pure awareness with some kind of state that you have an image of or a feeling associated with, then you will always start to, you will always try to fit awareness inside of that feeling. And you will always try to squeeze yourself into that feeling and try to maintain it there because that's what you equate to enlightenment. That's what you believe enlightenment or awareness or awakeness or self-realization to be. So I just wish to help you uh, let go of this idea as well, that awareness can be found as a particular kind of state, feeling, emotion, thought, or maybe even a state of no thought or a state of no emotion or a state of no feeling. None of these things are true, you see. Because awareness is always already here, which also means that it has been present 
to every single one of your states. Now, if awareness itself was one of those states, it would have come up and then disappeared, come up and disappeared along with the state that it would then be. But since it's not a state, since it's a transcendent non-state awareness, since it's simply the nature of consciousness, the nature of awareness, the nature of perception itself, it includes all perceptions. It embraces all perceptions. It enables all perceptions and experiences and appearances, same thing. But it itself cannot be confined to be any single one of the experiences that it is having. How can awareness be an experience that it is having? If it would, then again, it would come up and disappear along with that experience. But we've seen very decisively very definitively that awareness remains even when thoughts come and go, feelings come and go, depression comes and go, excitement comes and goes, people come and go, relationships come and go, circumstances come and go, money comes and goes. All the movement of life has always been changing inside of awareness and it has never actually affected the essence of awareness itself. So awareness by definition is not a state, at least not a state in the way that we think of it. It's not a state of a particular type of experience. Another way of simply saying it therefore is awareness is not an experience. It's not a particular type of experience. Now, I'm not saying you cannot experience awareness because you can. The only thing that cannot be experienced in traditional terms is infinity or the absolute or the one or beyondness which we'll get into in the infinity teaching, the infinity course. But awareness can have an experience of itself, but it itself never becomes any single one experience. Yes, in a sense we could say, and we'll get into this in Enlightenment 3, when I get into non-duality and inseparability, and we realize that awareness is the experiences that it's having as well, that they're inseparable, that they're one, one same thing, that objects actually are awareness. We'll get into that. But the appearances that come and go do not define awareness, do not entangle awareness. Awareness always remains free. It always remains the infinite endless observer. It will never become what it sees in that way. It will never be tied to the fate of what comes and what goes. So awareness is not a state. If you can, relax your search for a particular type of feeling to come with awareness. And simply be more open to that. Be less, in a sense, egotistical or insistent than that. Be more trusting. Have more faith in the fact that things unfold as they should unfold. And that awareness can be recognized regardless of what is unfolding. Because this is very powerful. As soon as you equate awareness to be a particular type of feeling, you will continue to experience the illusion that you are stuck or that you're sometimes not aware and sometimes you are aware and that sometimes you are enlightened, sometimes you're not enlightened. You will continue to beat yourself up. You'll continue to engage in this vicious cycle of seeking for that which is already doing all the seeing, all the being, all the freeing, all the here and nowness. So, for your own sake, let go of the idea that awareness should come in a particular type of form, feeling, sensation, thought, or state of being so that you can free yourself up to recognize what is always already looking through your eyes. Seeing any state, seeing any feeling, seeing every thought, feeling every feeling, it's not tied to what it observes. Realize this and it will make all your practices of recognizing awareness that much more effortless because you're no longer seeking for a particular type of experience. You're no longer trying to fit endless awareness, pure awareness into a particular type of mold. You allow it to be as free as it is. And you see that experiences are simply confirmations of the stateless state of free awareness. So for the purpose of this exercise's homework, I want you to sit down for approximately 10, 15 minutes and simply Again, rest, as you are already familiar with, rest in spacious, free awareness and recognize that, yes, feelings of that realization are released, meaning that you'll have moments of release, you'll have moments of experiencing maybe bliss, moments of experiencing freedom, moments of experiencing ease and expansion. But see that even the experiences or the innate qualities that awareness exudes, 
see that even throughout the comings and goings of these experiences, that even its own qualities, in a sense, come and go, at least in your eyes, at least to your sense of I am experiencing these feelings. Not ultimately, all these qualities are innately ever present, but your experience of ease, your experience of bliss, your experience of peace and freedom and expansion, what, watch them come and go and see how even those innate qualities of awareness, even when they come and go in your experience, awareness is aware of the coming, the being, and the disappearing of these experiences. So confirm to yourself that awareness, as you're sitting for 15 minutes, recognize awareness, be awareness, rest as awareness, and notice that all the expansive feelings of awareness and whatever other state of being or state of mind or state of doubt or state of lack may occur, notice that all these come and go and that awareness is not confined to any one of these states. It's beyond all states. It's the free observer itself. It's free agency. It's free awareness itself. This will help you stop seeking. And when you stop seeking, what you're looking for is so obviously right in your face. It's right here. It's realized. So have fun, as always. And share your results if you want to. Share your paragraphs, your explanation, your observations of this 15-minute meditation. Try it at least twice before you open the next lesson and share it with us in the study group. Thank you and have a great day.